In this video, I'll be walking you through how to set up your Raspberry Pi to mine the infamous Dogecoin and hopefully earn you the title as the next Slum Doge Millionaire. I had to. But before getting into it, what exactly is Dogecoin? Well, besides being the mother of all meme coins and garnering the interest from the likes of billionaire Mark Cuban and Elon Musk, Dogecoin actually emerged from much more humble beginnings back in 2013 when an IBM and Adobe software engineering duo created a fork of Litecoin, which is a fork of Bitcoin, and embedded several interesting properties. First, they created Dogecoin in a way that there was no maximum supply. So every time a new block reward is mined, 10,000 new Dogecoin are created. They also set up the protocol so that Dogecoin is actually 10 times faster than Bitcoin. And finally, Dogecoin's energy consumption falls well below that of Bitcoin, which is why Elon Musk considered accepting Dogecoin instead of Bitcoin to purchase his products. In fact, Elon was on a call with CEO of ARK Invest, Kathy Wood, as well as ex-Twitter founder Jack Dorsey, and he actually gave his explanation for why he stopped taking Bitcoin and is considering taking Dogecoin. Now, for those of you who think Dogecoin was strategically designed to improve upon its predecessors, I'm not sure it's even that deep. In fact, the co-founder basically admitted to the rushed and comical origins of Dogecoin and really urged people to not overthink it. So now that we know what Doge is and where it sits in the larger crypto ecosystem, let's get started mining. Real quick, if you're learning something useful, then be a good doggy and show some affection to that like button so that we can get this out to a wider audience. Thank you. As always, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe so that you're staying apprised of the latest around emerging technology. Thanks. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is format our micro SD card. And we're going to put the we're gonna put the new Raspberry Pi 64-bit architecture image on, um, on this uh, drive here. So I'm just gonna pop that into my computer. Okay, and now we can see the drive show up as boot. So I'm gonna use Raspberry Pi Imager in order to flash the operating system. If you don't have this application installed, then just go to, I think it's raspberrypi.com or raspberrypi.org and just go to downloads and you should be able to get it there. So I think you could use 32-bit, but I'm kind of migrating away from that. I'm gonna use 64-bit, so we'll select that. And then for choose storage, we're gonna do 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Be careful here, cause this will format whatever drive you select, meaning it will delete everything on that drive. So just be mindful. And then we're gonna click this little gear button and we're going to pre-enable some of the configuration options here. One is we're going to enable SSH and that's going to require that we set a new password. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm also gonna configure Wi-Fi so that it automatically connects to our network. So let's go ahead and add those credentials. And I'm gonna do set local settings, skip first run wizard, and that looks good to me. For the network, for the Wi-Fi network, make sure you're using a 2.4 gigahertz network because some of these devices don't support five gigahertz out of the box until you do like a firmware update. So just a little caveat there. Okay. So let's go ahead and click save, and then we are going to select write. Okay, so it looks like the operating system is written to the card, and we can immediately pull out the SD card because it's already ejected the card. So I'm just gonna pull the card out of the computer, and then we are just going to insert it into our Raspberry Pi. Okay. And then I'm just going to turn on the Raspberry Pi and we should be able to see activity with those LED lights. Okay, so now that our Raspberry Pi is turned on, let's connect to it and install some software. So I'm gonna just check that the Raspberry Pi did in fact connect to our local network. So I'm gonna do ping raspberrypi.local and I should get responses to this ICMP traffic and I do. 
So that looks good. So the next step is to log in via SSH. So I'm gonna do SSH pi at raspberry pi dot local. And so this is an error on my end. Basically, if you keep connecting to the Raspberry Pi with different formatting, then it's going to try to use old fingerprints to establish the SSH connection and it will throw errors if those don't match. So I just need to clear out those saved fingerprints. So I'm gonna open this file and remove an old fingerprint. So I'm just gonna do vim and then I'll do dd to delete a line. I'll do colon X to save and quit. And now when I try to establish a connection, it's going to create a new fingerprint. And I'm gonna say yes. And now it's gonna prompt me for that password that I entered when we did the advanced configuration. I'm gonna enter that in. And now it looks like we are connected. So let's download some of the software that we're gonna need. First, I'm gonna elevate myself to root by doing sudo su dash so I won't have any permissions issues. Let's download Vim, which is a text editor, and we're gonna need that. I'm gonna do apt get install Vim. We'll do yes. Okay, and now let's download the CPU miner software. So the Raspberry Pi does have a graphics card, but it's not accessible for crypto mining. So we're gonna use the four quad core CPUs in order to do our mining. And there's a package on GitHub that I've used before called Multi CPU Miner. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that down and the commands will be in the description. Okay, so we're gonna clone this repository. I'm also just gonna update some of the operating system packages. So we're gonna do apt update and then we're gonna do apt upgrade. Okay. And then we're just gonna install some dependencies. Okay, and then we're just gonna install the CPU miner that we just downloaded. Okay, so the mining script should be all set. So next, let's create an account with a pooling service. I'm gonna use one called Acapool. Okay, so we're gonna go to sign up and we can just fill out this information here. All right, so we're just gonna fill this out. Okay, and now it's asking us to log in. So we're just gonna log in here. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna wanna do is set up a worker. So we're gonna go to my account, my workers, and yeah, it's telling us we have no workers. So we're gonna set something up. We'll do refactored, and then we'll give it a password. Oh, okay, so now I have my worker set up here and that'll come into play later when we execute the mining script. So let's just go to pools, script, dogecoin. So our stats will show up here once we start mining. So we should be good on the pool in front for now and come back to some of this. So the next thing we want to configure is this is the um, URL of the network of the pool that we're going to use. And that port is a non-standard port. Um, and this port's probably gonna be blocked by your router. So the way we get around that is by logging into our router settings and ensuring that we're not blocking any ports. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so for me, I have an RS router. So I come to the router admin page and we're gonna to wanna to go to firewall. And there's two different IP address formats, IPv4, IPv6. I think IPv4 is what's usually used, but we're gonna modify both just in case. So if I do IPv4, see if I had maximum security, it would only allow these select ports, so it would block everything else. So I'm gonna do custom and then not block any ports. So I just click custom and then I would just save those changes. I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do it again. And then IPv6, I would just do the same thing here. And just be mindful that you're essentially downgrading your firewall, so you probably only want to do this temporarily, or you may want to selectively allow that single port in the uh, stratum URL that I showed you earlier. And you'll get an error in the script if the port's being blocked. Okay, so the final thing is we need a Dogecoin wallet address so that once we start mining, the proceeds can be paid out to our wallet. So you could download the official Dogecoin wallet uh, available on dogecoin.com, but I think it's a hassle because you have to sync the blockchain 
That's one way to do it. I'm gonna just use Coinbase Wallet because they will actually give you a Dogecoin address. In my phone on the left here, I can just go to Coinbase Wallet. All you have to do is click Receive and then Find Doge. And then it will give you the address, which is that alphanumeric string at the bottom. And you can share that to your computer and we can enter that in to Acapool. And that's how you get your Dogecoin address. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Okay, so I just shared my Dogecoin wallet address with my computer and here it is. And, we're, and so we're gonna wanna take that and enter it into Acapool. So we're gonna go to my account, edit account, and we're gonna do payment address, and then we'll enter our PIN. We'll set a payment threshold of 10, and then we have to enter our PIN, and then we'll do update. We'll enter our PIN, and then we can just update that account, and now it will pay out to that Dogecoin address. Okay, so now we should be good to mine. In order to mine, we have to come up with a command argument here. So this is what that looks like, and that will be available in the description. But essentially, you pass the pool, which we got from Acapool. You pass your username, username dot worker, and then the password for the worker. So I'm gonna take this. And I should be able to just run this right here. Okay, and this looks like we're successfully mining. So it's not gonna show on Acapool until we submit a good share, which could take a while given the Raspberry Pi is kind of, has a low hash rate. But let's go to the Acapool website. So after some time, you can see that it is marking my worker as active. It's providing some stats. So it is being acknowledged by Acapool. And any proceeds should be paid out to my Dogecoin account. And you can also see that information populating here now. Okay, so after 24 hours, unfortunately, the verdict was I did not earn anything. And that's because I did not have, I wasn't able to get accepted shares through. And that's a function of uh, the, no, the number of other miners in the pool and my hash rate. And my hash rate, I think, was just too low. I did mess with the um, flag to uh, modulate the um, difficulty. Um, by which um, I needed to submit shares uh, and that did not seem to help because even if I submitted them more frequently they would just get rejected so I'm not sure the Raspberry Pi has this sort of um, I mean I guess maybe if you did solo mining or if you used a less popular pool then maybe you could um, you could accumulate some proceeds from your work, but using Acapool, which I think is one of the more prevalent pools, I was not able to accumulate anything, unfortunately. Um, with Monero, I was, so it's interesting. I'm not sure exactly why that was, but um, yeah, I mean, it's a low, pa a low powered device. We knew that going in, um, but it is technically possible to mine Doge on the Raspberry Pi.